have come to keep us from living God's best life, living our best life for God, have to be stripped away so that we can live the way that he desires for us to live for him, which is holy and righteous. Do you believe this morning that God wants to restore you? Do you believe? Is there something that you want to be, that, that you want from God or that you want God to restore in your life? Amen. Come on, somebody, it might be joy. Yes. For somebody, it might be peace. For somebody, it might be yes. home ownership or, or that position on the job. Whatever the case may be, there is something that you desire from God that you once had before, that you yes. no longer have, that you yes. got to have back. In some form or some some shape. Yes, yes. To get back to the glory. To get back to the joy. To get back to the hope. Then the peace that, that, that you had before. I'll never. I'll never. Get back. To the Department of Justice. Making $60,000 a year. I'll never get back to 25. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Come on. We, we, we Listen. The, the law, the law, the ages says you go up, but you don't come down. We, we, the law of the ages is not like the law. What's the law that says what goes up must come down? What's that? What's that law called? The, the, the law of gravity. The law of the ages is not like the law of gravity. When you go up, you keep going, baby. Amen. So I cannot go, I cannot go back to 25. I cannot go back to the Department of Justice at 25 when I had $60,000 a year. I can't go back there. But at 40, but at 40, God can restore me to what life was kind of like. In some way, shape, or fashion at 40 to what it was kind of like. Not like it was, what it was kind of like. Right. See, some things God does. Some things, some things that you want back, you want back because of your flesh. Yes, yes, yes. But everything God wants you to have back is because of what He's put in your spirit. Amen. So what God restores might not look like what you lost, mm -hmm. but it's gonna feel like mm -hmm. what you lost because you'll be back. The place where where you where you were relying on him, where you were trusting in him, where you were believing in him, yes. where you were depending on yes. him. Yes. And that's what he desires. Mm -hmm. He wants your desire to be that desire. And when your desire is that desire, then he has no problem giving you the desires of your heart. Amen. That's what the Amen. word says, not me. So he will give you the desires of your heart. But, but what are your desires? Are your, be, be careful about what your desires are. Be careful about what your desires are because our flesh has a tendency to desire things that the spirit doesn't want. I heard, I heard somebody say, I can't remember who it was this week, I heard them say that that the, the flesh and the spirit are at war. The, and that's word. I mean, that's, that's, that's from the word of God. The flesh and the spirit are at war. The spirit will always win because the flesh can't handle the fight. Amen. The spirit will always win because the flesh can't handle the fight. See, when, when you rely on the spirit that is within you, when you rely on, see, oh, oh, back to that same scripture. He will do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think or imagine according to the power that works in, that works within you. What works in you? The Holy Spirit. So the flesh can't win if the Holy Spirit is at work in you. Now, you can in, you can with your flesh try to suppress the spirit, but God will find a way to whoop yes. your backside yes. into submission. Amen? Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank God for, for submission and rebuke and Thank chastisement. You. All right, let's, let's, let's bring, this, bring this home. Okay. Here's the, here's the third thing. Here's the third thing. Watch this. 
Not only do you have to be obedient and willing to open your mouth and ask, but you gotta be optimistic. That just simply means you have to believe. Gotta be optimistic. Why do I have to be optimistic? See, uh, 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 I think it was Winston Churchill that said, uh, Pessimists look at an opportunity. Pessimists look at an opportunity as oh, at a failure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. No. They. 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 they, they oh, let me get it right. As a chance to fail, an optimist looks at it as a failure, as an opportunity to succeed. That's what it was. The pessimist looks at an opportunity as a possibility to fail. An optimist looks at a possibility to fail as an opportunity. See, you have to, it's, it's sort of like seeing the cup half empty or half full. How do you look at things? What do you really believe? See, because what you believe is what you will experience ultimately. God wants to reveal to you everything that you believe about him. God wants to reveal to you. He wants to do in your life everything that his word says that he'll do. Every promise that his word says, he wants to fulfill them and manifest them in your life. I'll provide for you according to my riches and glory. Have you gone without have your, have your basic necessities not been met? Who do you attribute them being met to? Your own ability? Yourself? No, they, they, they are attributable. Everything, that, everything is attributable to the Holy Spirit, to the, to the working of God in your life. When things go wrong in your life, do you attribute that to, to God, to God being mad at you? No, God doesn't want, he, he will not withhold any good thing from, from his children. But the enemy comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. God is not going to take a, a, a lot, take your life or take someone in your family's life and, 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 and say that that's a part of his plan for you. No, that's the devil. That's the devil taking the life because God is the giver of life. The enemy is the taker of life. That's the enemy taking the life. And God, there is a purpose. There is a purpose behind it. But it wasn't God's purpose to take the life. Don't get that mixed up. Got to be optimistic. Whatever it is, God, whatever it is you're seeking God to restore in your life, you've got to be optimistic that it can and it will happen. If you don't believe it, you can't achieve it. If you don't believe it, you can't achieve it. But if you believe, if you just believe, See, when you believe, oh, thank you, Mama Joe. When you believe something, mm -hmm. you begin to talk about that thing as if it's already come to pass. Amen. I'm, and I, I, listen, I'm crazy enough to believe for each and every one of you what you won't believe for yourself. My God. <laughs> That's the, kind of, that's the kind of faith that I'm walking with. That's the kind of optimism that I'm walking with. Whatever it is that, you, that you've talked to God about, even if you don't believe it, I believe it for you as long as it lines up according to the will of God for your life. I believe it to come to pass. I believe it will come to pass. And I'll wait for the day of the testimony. I'm not looking for the sign because I've already seen it. My God, my God. Obey God's word. Open up your mouth and ask God for what it is you want to be restored. Be optimistic that it's going to happen. Believe that it's going to happen. Don't see because, because the layers are being peeled back. See, you're looking at the process. You're not looking at the end result. You're not keeping your eye on the prize. You're, you're looking at the process.